Welcome to the dark stream, Vox Day, voxday.blogspot.com, and unauthorized.tv. Thanks for tuning in, and tonight I am here to remind you that you do not need to take the ticket. The golden ticket. It's interesting how much the truth of life is actually flashed right in front of us, stuck right under our nose, and yet somehow we don't pick it up. Somehow we don't see what's right in front of us. In the movie Willy Wonka, the golden ticket is a stand-in for the price of selling your soul. You know, you can have anything you want. Look, look again at what it offers. Oh, this is not the... <laughs> This is not the graphic that I'd originally uh, thought to select. The other one said had this uh, description of, you know, anything you want. You can have anything you want as long as you get the golden ticket. And, you know, it's something that always puzzles people of intelligence and people of talent. You know, why is this person more successful than I am when they haven't done anything, when they haven't accomplished anything. You know, we're not talking about jealousy and envy and, you know, we're not talking about the, the Salieri's looking at Mozart saying, why can't I be talented like he is? Why can't I write music that good? We're talking about the complete opposite. We're talking about the Mozarts who can't find anyone to uh, buy his symphonies or can't find a, a place willing to let him perform while the Salieri's are being lauded as great composers when he knows that they're not. You know, and you see this in every walk of life. Why on earth is Amy Schumer being portrayed as this wildly successful comedian? She's not funny. I've literally never heard her say anything that's funny. How do these politicians sell 500,000 books in a month. I've never met anyone who's read any of those books. I'm one of the very few people who actually does read books written by Henry Kissinger or Francis Fukuyama or William F. Buckley. But I talk to a lot of people who are pretty heavily involved in politics, have been pretty heavily involved in politics, at a fairly high national level, and none of them had ever read any of these books. Who's reading them? Well, I mean, the answer obviously is no one. It's all fake. And you look at the music world. I mean, everyone understands that Puff Daddy has no musical talent whatsoever. You know, I don't even think he's particularly good at marketing or anything. So what we have begun to understand is that a certain amount of success is distributed. It's given out. It's handed to people for various reasons. Sometimes it's nepotism. Sometimes it's... Uh, it, it, you know, ad advantaging a, a co-ethnic, um, sometimes it's ideological. I mean, there's there's many different reasons. 
And sometimes it's fair, sometimes it's legitimate. You know, the less established and the less organized uh, an industry is, the more open it is. You know, in the early days of, of computer games, there was no, you know, nobody was taking any tickets. There were no tickets to be took. None were offered. You just had to go there and, and do your own thing. But, you know, eventually over time, once the money is there, suddenly then you start seeing all the, the same the same games, the same uh, opportunities going to the mediocre. You know, I was I was reading a um, a really good set of essays by uh, a legendary game designer, and he actually had a um, a essay called 40 Years of Failure," and he was asking himself the question, "Why have I failed so badly?" And you know, he's because he's a game designer. Of course, he's he's looking at all the possibilities he can think of, but unfortunately he didn't land on the one thing that is fairly obvious he didn't take the ticket he refused the ticket you know he didn't want to uh, sell out something that he created so he got kicked out and uh, it was sold out against his will and that was the end of his opportunities in the industry, the, the easy ones, you know. And so that's why you see, you know, this, it's one of the many reasons you see this piling up of mediocrities. You know, one of the reasons why the Hellmouth Hollywood is so mediocre, is so completely filled with mediocrities, is that there's no one there but ticket takers. There's very little talent to be found. And you know, that's, that's the price of selling your soul. You lose your attachment to the good, the beautiful, and the true. But I have good news for you. Just because you haven't taken the ticket, just because you're not going to uh, be handed that easy path to success and fame and stardom, doesn't mean that you can't be successful your own way. You know, today uh, marked the uh, 200 millionth page view at Vox Populi, my blog. Um, last month there was over 3 million views, all time 200 million. Um, the point is, is that they can't entirely stop the signal. In fact, they don't even entirely want to stop the creative signal. They may not like me, they may not like you, um, they may obstruct and hinder and so forth, but here's the thing. They are actually terrified of doing what the Chinese once did and stopping all development. You know, it's possible to put a society in a stasis. The Chinese did it successfully. You know, the Aborigines in Australia did it successfully. My American Indian ancestors pretty much did it successfully. The problem is, the only way to do it is to have everyone live at pretty much a subsistence level. So, running water and flush toilets are right out. And I don't think anyone really wants that. Maybe a few of the crazier vegan types or something, but when you're talking about the kind of people who can convey or deny success with a, a simple phone call or a meeting or a signature on a contract, I'm pretty sure that they don't, um, that they don't want that to live in that kind of world any more than anyone else does. And so, you know, I didn't get uh, the opportunities that people less talented and people less provably skilled were given. 
you know, I could have been on the op-ed page. I, my national my nationally syndicated column could have been picked up by 150 newspapers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Didn't happen. But that's fine because when you don't have any chance, then as long as you don't leave it up to chance, as long as you just decide, you know what, I'm going to make my own way. I'm going to do my own thing and I know that I can't uh, be on YouTube. So I'm going to you know, set up my own show on BitChute or I'm going to set up uh, my own servers or uh, you know, I can't get signed, I can't get a book signed to a major publisher and Amazon is not going to convey the blessings of the algorithm on me. So I'm going to find a way to market my own books and sell my own books. And people have been doing this for a long time. You know, Raymond Feist couldn't get his uh, books signed initially. So he was going around to uh, role-playing game conventions, selling his books out of the back of his car. You know, eventually he was, you know, brought into the system and, and so forth. Um, that I would argue that that should not be your goal. You know, why, why uh, go ahead and, and be subsumed by the system when you don't have to be. But the point is that even if you are not favored, even if you are not selected, even if you're, even if you refuse to take the ticket, that doesn't mean that you can't be successful in your own way on your own terms. You know, back in the in 2008 or so, 2008-2012, all we were hearing is that, you know, the whatever blog of John Scalzi was the most popular blog in science fiction. He was a he was a big deal. Um, Tor Books was was you know signed him to this big contract because he was so popular. Well, if you notice, the average over the past four years on my blog is more than uh, it's more than fifty percent more traffic than Scalzi was lying about having back then. Now, if you don't understand how things work, if you don't understand the whole point about the ticket and uh, and success that is granted and conveyed, you might be confused. You'd be like, "Well, you know, hey, I've I've managed to build up even more notoriety and more uh, support and more backing." Surely they'll come and knock on my door. Well, no, they won't. Not if you've already indicated that you're not willing to be part of their system. Not if you're not willing to do what it takes. And again, think about how obvious it is. You know, think about how many times you see the movie about the the wannabe rock star. You know. Are you willing to do what it takes? They're not talking about hard work. Are you are you willing to work and practice and go on tour? They're not talking about that. They're talking about are you willing to bend the knee? Are you willing to submit to the God of this world? And if you're not, then that's not an option. You know? And and that's good because now your success is real. Now, whatever you happen to achieve is legitimate. There's a reason why they're always talking about imposter syndrome because they are imposters. They know they haven't earned their success. You know, they can compare what they've done. Even if you are given a, a great producer and he 
completely restructures your song and it becomes a pop hit and you're on the top of the pop charts and so forth, you know what you've done. You know how much you brought to the table. And you'll know when you hear somebody else who's not as successful and not as famous and all that and you hear their little demo tape and you realize that they are much better than you ever were you know so you know rejoice if you're not given that acceptance letter be happy when your comic doesn't even finish in the top 36 of the competition. I'm talking about uh, Midnight's War, of course. Objectively, one of the top three comics in its category in the competition. <laughs> didn't come, didn't even, didn't even get like the lowest honorable mention. And now, in this case, I actually think it was more organic than anything. They, what they favor, what they want, is very much not what we were offering. But we could sit there and complain about it and say, oh, it's not fair or whatever. Who cares? We promptly removed everything from there. And in a couple weeks, we're going to launch our own alternative. Who cares what's on Webtoons? We'll have our own. And in that vein, and attempting to apply some of the lessons that I've learned from reading the third edition of In Search of Stupidity and uh, reading uh, the Digital Antiquarian's accounts of the, the game industry back in the late 80s, early 90s, uh, and then also taking into account what has made the blog successful over time, which I just believe to be, you know, sheer bloody minded consistency. You know, three posts a day minimum, preferably four. People know it's going to be there. And after five years, after 10 years, after 15 years, it just builds, you know, that doesn't work here on YouTube, of course, because, you know, you're throttled they 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 don't recommend you etc etc that's fine you know but i've been applying those lessons and so uh, one of the things that we've done is i've gone and revived dev game which is no longer despite the fact that the the url is devgamecourse.blogspot.com um, we've actually changed the subtitle from the premier game development course to the premier game development site. And I've been very fortunate in recruiting two uh, very experienced game developers who are already beginning to contribute to it. Um, and in fact, uh, made contact with a uh, very famous game designer who is actually interested in uh, having Castalia publish uh, two of his game development books and so one of which will be entirely new and so the reason for this is is that you know I've, I've decided it's kind of time to decloak a bit um, I've spent the last 15 years or so doing my best to keep my political side separate from my game development side and for the most part successfully I haven't had really any problem um, finding work when I wanted it, uh, doing the jobs that I wanted to do. I did make some bad decisions along the way. Um, I, <laughs> I should have just uh, taken the, the Funcom directorship when it was offered, but um, you know, instead of turning it down, but say la vie. But the thing is, is that now that politics has invaded the game industry, we have to stand up and we have to make it clear that we are going to attempt to develop and design games the right way 
not turn them into uh, you know hollowed out SJW skin suits and so um, you know we're not going to be culture warriors in the culture war sense we're just going to focus on developing games the right way but with a wary eye to those who are attempting to interfere with that and uh, if you're watching this and you're a experienced game programmer game designer game developer and you're interested in contributing regularly to dev game shoot me an email um, you know we want it to become a, a place that will be an absolute must read for anybody who is serious about developing games or even understanding how game development works um, I'm putting all kinds of stuff up there uh, today I put up an old review from uh, computer gaming world uh, this is my my first review for them it was in the uh, March 1995 issue and it was on a very very bad game called Inferno the Odyssey continues and so uh, we're gonna be putting up you know game docs game design docs or selections from them uh, essays uh, I actually put up some uh, some rules that from a, a board game that I've been playing with on and off for probably 20 years now it's actually the design that that eventually led to the Selenoth books Summa Helvetica, A Throne of Bones, A Sea of Skulls um, and in like manner we've also decided to get the Arkhaven blog moving again now I'm not contributing here because frankly I don't know enough about comics to have anything significant to say but we've already got two very good writers uh, the Dark Herald and uh, John Della Rose Dark Herald's already got his first two posts up there in fact I actually had to send him an email and tell him to to take it easy because he he wrote two massive essays and there's absolutely no possible way that anyone human could expect to keep up that pace uh, for more than a week or two um, but we're as as I said with relation to webtoons we're gonna have new stuff coming out on that front front too and so I want to have a first-rate comics destination site as well and so um, and so what we're trying to do here is apply the lessons that we've learned from uh, what are some of the challenges that, that we face because we don't take the ticket um, and what are some of the opportunities that presents because we're free to do things our own way so anyhow thanks for tuning in uh, if you were one of the people who contributed to uh, those 200 million page views thank you for reading uh, I hope you'll continue to come back and and read VP for many many years to come I'm Vox Day and this is the dark stream.